I'm Molly Buckley Marutis, and happy to be here with my Cleveland Teaching Collaborative team, Kalita O'Brien, Will Fistek, our two graduate assistants, and my co-founder, Shelly Rose. Dr. Shelly Rose is in the history department at CSU. Uh, so I'm happy to announce that John Hubbard is back for more. He will be leading our 1 p.m. session for day three, and the title of his session is Leveraging Zoom Teams Post-Pandemic at CSU. Um, immediately following John, we have Amanda Lamadani, where creativity and equity meet exploration and workshopping. So I will turn it over uh, to John to get the one o'clock session started. Thanks, John. Yeah, thanks, Molly. Um, <clears throat> I envision this as uh, either, either conversational or kind of um, as spurring conversation. The, we've had some interesting um, questions about our ability to use Zoom specifically uh, post pandemic. There are a number of faculty who would love to teach remotely, uh, but don't have a medical exemption on file. And so they've been told, no, they can't use Zoom for uh, in place of classroom experience. Um, and that's frustrating, but I think there are a number of ways that we can use Zoom and Teams post pandemic in the immediate future. And I wanna put forth the idea that these are both powerful tools maybe central to a, a um, I don't know, a unified push to uh, upper administration regarding how we might view these, how, how we might view these tools in the scope of uh, CSU 2.0. And this, um, this conversation is geared primarily to Cleveland State audience, Cleveland State faculty. Um, though there, there may be some ideas, some concepts that come from it that are useful to, to others. That's really the, the focus audience there. Um, I wanna just start out with the concept. Oh, and, and invite you to um, interrupt anytime with questions. I'm not great about following the chat. So if you have a question, really holler, speak up uh, or tell me to look at the chat. The, um, so I wanna, I wanna start out with my two biases, my bias um, uh, uh, toward Teams and toward Zoom. We've, Zoom is a great tool for face-to-face, real-time collaboration. It is not a collaborative package. It is not it does not do what Teams does. It does not do what Slack does. It does not do what, what tools in, in that realm do. Microsoft Teams, uh, as a resource to Cleveland State faculty, it's available to all of us. Um, it's a much more robust environment for collaboration. All of the Microsoft Office products are there at, at your disposal. You don't have to worry about sharing a screen or where did that document, you know, where did I save that document kind of thing. Um, You've got Microsoft Forms in there, which gives you the ability to do more formal quizzing assessment uh, than was previously available in Zoom's polling. We'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, it's much easier to make the, the text-based communications as well as audio only and video with audio. Uh, persistent content in, in teams um, and, and readily available to the members of the team. Whether that is a group of uh, a classroom group, a classroom team, or a team that you've made ad hoc, uh, it's a, a group of, of peers, colleagues that you are uh, engaging on some project with. The one thing that's, um, I think, is a tremendous thing to keep in mind with teams is it is a collaborative tool that is work centric like slack we our students our graduates are going to, going to leave and go into a work environment where some sort of tool like teams or slack is likely to be present so we are doing them a service in that regard by 
presenting, you know, by presenting access to it and giving them the ability to say, yeah, I've used something like that, whether the whether they're going into a a Google environment or a Slack environment or a Teams environment, I've used a robust collaborative tool. I get it. I know what it is. Um, that's that's good for them, and that's uh, if it's good for them, that's good for us. So Zoom is um, Zoom is playing catch up. Zoom is crazy easy to use, and their their tagline uh, from the get go was "It just works," and it really does. Um, you know, if if you can click a link, you can join a Zoom meeting. Um, it's got a lot more to it than that, and a lot of things that folks haven't touched. And they know that they're playing catch up. They are working with a company called Class, and that Class is designed is built on Zoom to be an uh, an education first product, and to interface with uh, various LMS. We've looked at it. It is young. Um, it does not interface elegantly with with Blackboard. Um, and Zoom, independent of this, Zoom is an investor in class. Um, independent of class, Zoom has in their summer updates, uh, they are releasing the ability in polling to have correct answers and to send those graded polls to the gradebook in Blackboard. So they're, they're beginning to enhance their feature set specific to the education market. And they will continue to do so because they are really coming from behind um, in, in terms of competing with Teams and, and Google um, in, in that arena. So that's going to be interesting to watch uh, what we are able to do in, in Zoom. And I, I'll, I'll now probably revert to Zoom as, as my primary reference to a collaborative tool. But really anything I say about Zoom holds true in Teams. Um, but as, as we move forward in, in wanting to use Zoom, Zoom is going to keep rising to meet our needs. We're, we're gonna have more tools available to us and more compelling arguments um, as to why it's a viable option and, and why we might push for using it in a, in a more structured manner rather than um, at this point in time, needing to use it as, as a, a flex alternative, something that's flexible. Uh, I need to be, I, I can't present to class today. I can't be face-to-face -face because X, Y, Z. I got a flat, my, my kid's sick. Uh, I needed to travel somewhere. But I can, still, uh, I can still host the lecture in real time on Teams, on Zoom. So we, we've got a... a solution that everyone is familiar with, particularly with Zoom, that allows continuity and allows uh, to avoid disruptions to instruction. It also allows us to have both of the, the both of the tools allows us to have ad hoc and semi ad hoc meetings with with colleagues or for students um, to have those meetings with teams um, and, and their colleagues, whether that's academic or in, in, some other, uh, in some other way. The student licenses are the exact same as the faculty and staff licenses. Everyone at CSU for Zoom and for Teams has the same feature set um, as everyone else. The, in Teams, the person who creates the team sets the rights for the other team members. So I am not saying that a student has the same rights as a faculty member inside of a team that a faculty member has created, but a student can create a team and has the same ability to make some team members owners and some team members members and, and so on. So there's no, no difference in the tool set in Zoom or Teams for, for students or faculty. Um, the uh, there were a couple of other sessions today where there was a, a, a really nice focus on teams and some conversation about um, post pandemic instruction in general and the the notion that that teams and zoom can be used for office hours or any kind of, of meeting like that 
Teams is, um, is particularly effective. While it is app-based, it does give, because it's app-based, uh, ongoing communication that Zoom doesn't have. If, if I wanted to invite you to a Zoom meeting through Zoom, you need to already be logged into Zoom to see that invitation. Um, in Teams, if you've got the app installed on your mobile device or, or your desktop, it's just going to come through. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bug you. Now, you may not want to, and you can set uh, away or asleep times in Teams and say, don't, you know, don't send me notifications during those hours. Um, but, but in terms of opening up channels of communication, both between faculty and students and among uh, peer groups, I, I, they're, vo they're powerful tools. What I'd like to do um, is, is focus, I'm going to share on the screen um, some articles and some CSU specific information that is really what I think will spur the conversation um, and, and maybe uh, get us where I think we might go. Let me share my screen and let me think about what I want to share first. I think we're going to go with some, some data first. Um, Da, 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 da. Where did my browser go? I guess I'll share that and then switch. Oop. Oh, come on. There we go. Campus net. Um, so we are told that we can't have Zoom based classes. Um, but interestingly enough, we have remote online, remote learning courses this semester. We have online courses, which are Blackboard. Um, we have blended courses, you know, traditional, traditional courses. But if I go to remote learning courses right now and search, I'm going to find that we've got somewhere in the neighborhood of 90 remote learning courses offered, uh, both graduate and undergraduate. Um, this is just the undergrad. Uh, even though we're we're not able to offer remote courses, so that's just that's data. No commentary there. Um, the uh, the the other piece of data is um, from President Sands and the CSU 2.0 goal of increasing student enrollment by 4,500 students uh, within the next few years. Um, it is 2021, so that's you know three years away um, to get for that class, um, if you wanna read it that way. So we've got, um, we know we have a, a demand to, to varying degree, uh, and, and I'm more familiar with the, the faculty call for the ability to do remote instruction. Um, but there are a number of articles out there that are suggesting um, that remote, remote instruction and remote learning is something that kind of everybody wants. Um, we are, if we're keeping up on the news, th we're seeing that, that uh, folks are not necessarily returning to work. Some folks are, re are, are resigning rather than going back to a face-to-face -face environment. Um, if we want to, again, prepare students for possible work experiences, we want to use, we want to leverage the tools that are available. We want to make sure that they are um, capable and facile, uh, flexible, learners and thus workers. Um, and I'll put these the links to all these articles in the chat in just a sec. Um, this is uh, this Educause article is is a very interesting read. I, it's um, talking about the you know the post COVID classroom in general and goes into um, it, it talks about the flexibility and uh, celebrates our our flexibility and ability to transform uh, on the fly as faculty, but, you know, it, it does, it talks about, um, I think the University of, uh, Florida State University's Campus Reimagined, um, is an interesting reference to a, a an article, an, another article, um, about flexible learning, um, 
And the next chapter is really looking at what possibilities are. Um, that's worth a read. The uh, This was the one the, that made me go search for other articles um, when I saw this one came across my desk. I was under the impression that everyone was sick of uh, online learning options and just wanted to be back face to face. And this said um, that students recognize that there are courses that may be better delivered and better received in a synchronous um, uh, electronic format. And they're looking for that. If students are looking for that, shouldn't CSU maybe be looking to deliver that to the 4,500 new students we need to get? Um, and then this one um, is, uh, you know, pushing the envelope a little bit more in its title. Um, but it's it's uh, an interesting it's an interesting premise that uh, um, we in designing uh, the traditional student um, there's today there's no such thing as a traditional student if we're designing our our courses for the traditional student they they put forward we're designing our courses for nobody. Um, that traditional student doesn't exist. So I want to I want to have I want to let those ideas inform conversation. Um, I'd love to be in a position where we can um, let me close that for a sec. Where we can um, put forward an argument to upper administration that there are you know if we are thoughtful and, and conscientious about this we can leverage these tools in really powerful ways that align with uh, the university's mission ongoing, align with the new mission of CSU 2.0 and the enrollment goals, um, and really serve both faculty and students in, in remarkable ways. So that's, I, I wanted to get that out there and hopefully spur a conversation. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing and because I see there's some things in the chat. Um, yeah, so I was, I was, John, thank you. Your latest series of points reminded me, I had a few students in my um, classes this fall and spring and the one piece, and we may have mentioned this once, they had, they were taking a while for their graduate program because they were working full time. And they were so happy that, and they almost always chose the remote web-based class like you showed us. And they were so happy that finally remote web-based didn't mean asynchronous. Yeah. It was like, yes, a, a remote program that has some connection with live moments and they didn't need that all the time. Um, and I just, I don't want to lose this, like see a campus net that's back to remote. <laughs> in person, yeah. like that there's more fluidity in between. Yep. And, and we, you know, our department has a, a long history of, of collaboration uh, in that we've run the, the IVDL classes, the video conferencing classes. And we've had um, some successful and some less than successful partnerships, but you know, the, there was a joint master's program in social work with the University of Akron in Cleveland State. We continue a, a program with Urban and with uh, both Lorraine and Lakeland Community Colleges. Uh, we've done modern language uh, courses. Um, and it's without the, the requirement of an incredibly expensive standards-based video conferencing setup, which doesn't always work well on both ends, uh, we know Zoom is is pretty reliable, and in fact, we're we're redesigning one of our video conference rooms to be a Zoom centered room, uh, which which Urban will leverage for their partnerships, their ongoing partnerships. Um, we're we're redoing uh, virtually all of Berkman Hall to add student cameras, so that there's a camera in the room that can show the students and microphones that will. 
um, that will call the student camera when students start speaking so that that we have uh, these interactive rooms. Some of the rooms will uh, include, uh, two of the rooms will include um, confidence monitors in the back so that you as the instructor, you can see what's going on without having to look over at the screen um, or at, at your screen if you're running the Zoom meeting there. Um, so we're using CARES Act money to do that. That's in theory, that's happening this summer. Um, that's happening before fall classes start in a few weeks. <laughs> we'll see. Um, you know, so we we are we are trying to put an infrastructure that that supports that. Uh, but if we could do if we could leverage that experience that we have with IVDL, translate it to Zoom and make it, um, I, you know, I. It's odd for me to say this, but to institutionalize that whole thing so that faculty know a, a remote course is Zoom or Teams. It is supported by this group of people. We know when these courses are happening so that we can have staff available for support. Um, th then I think we can make, uh, make some great things happen. Yeah, that is so exciting to hear about the new stuff in the classroom, John. Um, and I've been thinking about this a lot as well, because in our department, like Molly said, we have graduate students who are part-time graduate students, but full-time working somewhere, whether they're working in schools or not. And um, they were there were a lot of students who enrolled when we went remote, whether it was synchronous or asynchronous in our content grad courses, um, which for social studies teachers, I think was a real benefit, right? Um, it fit better with them for one of the first times. And so our department's debate is, can we leverage a room where we can have a seminar and have students be remote and in the person? This is one of the things on our director of graduate studies list to do, and he's not sure how it's going to happen or if it should happen, but I think these are the, you're right on, on point with the conversations that are happening, at least at the department level, right, and the instructor level, and, and the enrollments is really what it's going to come down to. I mean, will we catch those students who did find remote learning um, in whatever format to be beneficial or not? Um, even if it's just that they don't want to come park on campus. Sure. <laughs> One of my yep. students was like, I love this. I don't have to pay for my parking pass. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, we don't, we don't know what's in their heads <laughs> exactly, but we do know like that article suggests that a lot of them did find flexibility to be an important asset. And so be, it's, I'm, I'm just gonna take the opportunity to post those links in the chat. Cause I, I forgot about that. Mm. I said I was gonna do it. Oh, sure. No problem. I ask you if you could. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Yeah, we're we're excited about the the new rooms. We're hoping everything gets in. Um, we've got we're focusing on Berkman Hall. Uh, mm -hmm. so we're, we've got a few rooms going in in um, let's see in business in urban um, that are also going to have some enhanced features. Uh, we're trying mm -hmm. to do some of the larger gathering spaces as well, uh, like Dively Auditorium and Urban, um, where we can bring in guests remotely or, or share the content uh, widely over Zoom or Teams. And we are, we're designing the, the rooms to be agnostic. We are not making them Zoom rooms. We're making them rooms that, that can use Teams or Zoom or even Google Meet if that's, if that's your poison. So uh, in my experience uh, at where I taught this past year as a student teacher, they had a pretty interesting approach for the mixed hybrid classroom, um, especially for the teachers who had students and like were notified prior that they're gonna have students that opted to remain remote while also teaching students that are in person uh, the school actually decided to give every teacher a cart. And for those specific hybrid courses, um, the student or the teachers would hook up um, an external mic system that kind of was local, that would like look, get located more central to the students in the classroom, as well as an external um, video camera. And so you could kind of see all of the classroom um, 
if there was a board behind you, you'd see that from like the main, I mean, kind of like the same camera that you're looking at me from. And then um, you'd also have the kind of communication, um, which is kind of cool. Um, it seemed to work out for the most part. I know the teachers felt a little bit overwhelmed at first, at least with, you know, trying to manage a classroom, all the classroom management that has to go on and then also manage how do you keep kids kind of interacting who are also virtual, um, especially kind of in the seventh or the, the high school levels. Um, I don't know if the same like classroom management would be so much of an issue from a collegiate standpoint. Um, just the maturity levels are a little bit higher in, in, in some mm -hmm. cases, right? Um, <laughs> um, but but um, I don't know. I mean, I think this is a really good conversation to have. It's something that I've wondered about myself just in the high school context, you know, what's, what's going to be the next step? Because I think, you know, it's clear that while it might not be the, the perfect solution, it's obviously here that it is an available solution for the, the online platform. And so, you know, how can we best utilize it so that all students will benefit and, and even students who, who don't have access and who do want to come to Cleveland State as all the things that we've said, you know, that's going to open up opportunities for so many more people. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that, that your, uh, your high school experience sounds, sounds positive, sounds more thoughtful than some of the high school experiences I've thought in terms of how they've accommodated the, the remote participants in a, in a hybrid scenario, um, which is frustrating. The, uh, I think high schools are gonna be surprised um, with the number of students who are going to request accommodations um, to, to not show up. Um, and and I, think, I think at CSU, we are going to be um, surprised. I wouldn't be, su I wouldn't be surprised. I will make this prediction. Everybody who teaches uh, in the next two semesters will have a student who needs to be remote. Um, and that's gonna, that's going to frustrate a number of, of faculty and a number of students. Um, and so, so we're going to have to work on, on how we address that. Yeah. And I actually think one important point to put in there, um, Janae Cohn actually just um, published an article in the Chronicle this week. And one of the things she said really struck me is that we, we all are throwing around terms like hybrid, but everybody means something a little bit different. Um, which struck me because when I do my history work, I study peace. And when people say peace, everybody means something a little different. So it really struck yeah. a chord with me. Um, but it occurred to me that, you know, our project has been really focused on controlled vocabularies and like using the same words. And I think the administration and, you know, the staff, the instructional design staff like you and faculty all kind of need to figure out what we're talking about so we can <laughs> all, all figure out where we're going next as well. And I, I, yeah, I'm really appreciative of this session, John, because it's opening up a conversation that I think we need to have. And now's the time to have it too, especially yeah. with CSU 2.0. You've linked it in really nicely with the trajectory of the university as well. Excellent. Yeah, I think it, it seems like everything, at least in the CSU universe, needs to be connected to 2.0 for an argument. So the enrollment piece, that's a very um, a smart move there. Well, thank you, John. Give you a yeah. uh, Teams, I mean, Zoom round of applause. Where are we? <laughs> I know. I was like, wait a second, we are on Zoom. <laughs> so, thank you so much for sharing your insight and situating it within the broader picture, particularly with, of enrollment and what students may be needing, really, quite honestly, and that we should not just go back to exactly how we were doing things before, but learn from, learn from what we've experienced.